Welcome to Lecture Online, and now let's summarize, at least at the top level, what we can tell by looking at electromagnetic radiation coming from space. Well, first of all, we can determine the temperature of the object. Using Wien's law, we know that the temperature of the object is equal to some constant, 0.0029, divided by the wavelength, or the most predominant wavelength coming from that object. All right? Secondly, we can tell the velocity of the object. We know that if there's been a shift in the radiation wavelength from a known uh, wavelength, we can say that the velocity is equal to the speed of light times the amount of the shift divided by the original shift of the object if it was not moving. Thirdly, we can tell what the object is made out of, or made up of. We can say that the uh, kind of elements in the object come from the emission spectrum or the absor absorption spectrum. So emission spectrum or the absorption spectrum. So in the case of stars, we have to look at the absorption spectrum and we can see which wavelengths are missing. We then pair them up with the elements that we know of from our laboratory experiments and say, aha, those are the elements that are on that star. Or if it comes from a nebula, we can look at the emission spectrum of the nebula and again line up the known colors from laboratory experiments to so the colors that we see there and we can then determine the kind of elements that are found in there. We can also figure out the rotation of the object. We remember that when the object is rotating, part of the object is moving away from us, part of the object is moving towards us, and the amount of that spread in the wavelengths of the particular light coming from us will tell us how fast the object is rotating. Also, we can tell the abundance of the elements in the object. If there's a lot of that element there, the specific lines of the emission spectrum or the absorption spectrum will be very strong, they're very pronounced, and so we can see that the amount of the material there will be very much a function of how, um, how pronounced those lines are. For example, if you have a spectrum like this, an emission spectrum of hydrogen, and the line is very, very faint, you can barely see it like that, you would then conclude that there's not a lot of hydrogen there. If the line is very pronounced, then you can say, aha, there must be a lot of the hydrogen present. Now that's again not as simplistic as that because at different temperatures, certain elements will be pronounced uh, differently, but leaving that alone, at the same temperature, we can at least see a ratio of abundance that way. What type of object we're dealing with? We can say that if there's a nebula there, we're going to see an emission spectrum. If there's a star, we can see an absorption spectrum. And so because of that, and for example, a planet, we can probably see a continuous spectrum because the radiation there will not have any absorption unless again there's an atmosphere there and but the type of radiation that we get will come from different elements will be different um, so typically nebulas give you an emission spectrum stars will give you an absorption spectrum planets will either give you a continuous spectrum if there's no atmosphere or an absorption spectrum if there's an atmosphere but again we can usually tell the difference between them and finally the direction of motion we know when an object is moving towards the observer, observer, then we know that it's blue shifted. And when the object is moving away from the observer, we know that the light is red shifted. So simply the type of shift will tell us the direction of motion as well as the velocity of the motion. So it's very interesting how much we can actually tell by observing electromagnetic radiation in different ways to come up with different kinds of information. And that's not the sole type of information. There's additional information beyond what we have covered here. Uh, we sometimes use filters to try and minimize our error in determining the wavelength and so forth, but those are special techniques that we'll have to talk about in other videos. But this gives you a very good top-level view of what we can figure out from studying electromagnetic radiation coming from space.